Well, uh, we have been talking about the principles of the doctrine of Christ. So let me, let me pray again before we get started. Just ask that the Holy Spirit open our eyes and our ears this morning. How about that? Father, I thank you this morning that as we open the Word of God, that we have our ears and our, our minds and our hearts open to receive what the Word of the Lord is saying to the church today. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church today. That we want to hear your word, we want to receive your word, and then we want to live your word. So, Father, first things first, we have to be able to hear it. Open our ears and our eyes of understanding today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen, amen and amen. Okay, well, if you would, turn in your Bibles to Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. And this is our main theme. We open with this scripture every Sunday, and we will for the next couple of weeks until we move into a different direction. But right now we're covering the last few principles of the doctrine of Christ. So Hebrews 6, 1 through 3 says, Therefore, leaving the principles of doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, which is one, of faith towards God, two, the doctrine of baptisms, there's three, of laying on of hands, which is four, the, what we discussed last week and demonstrated again this morning, and of the resurrection of the dead, which we'll discover today, and of eternal judgment, which is next week. Next week's message will be on eternal judgment. This week's message is on resurrection of the dead. We're going to talk about the resurrection of the dead. I'm going to share with you many scriptures this morning that, that relate to the resurrection. Uh, you know, sometimes we go, we, we go through life many times not giving the afterlife much thought. You know, next week we're going to talk about eternal judgment, which will be part of the afterlife. But before you ever get to that afterlife part, there's something called resurrection from the dead. And for most, the only time they think about death or dying is when a loved one or a friend passes away. Uh, most of the time, I, I, you know, whenever I go to uh, or I do a, a funeral or a memorial service, I always bring this up, that most folks in that room probably hadn't thought about death or dying in a long time until they're at a funeral service or they're at a memorial and they're not you know, during the course of their day or their life they're not usually going along thinking much about the afterlife and I say we should <laughs> I say we should periodically think about I know I do that you know I think about the return of Jesus every time something crazy goes on in the world this pandemic has made me think about well Jesus has got to be coming soon look at this nonsense the election I'm like oh Lord Jesus you got come on Jesus it's good you got to do something uh, the Middle East, all the stuff that goes on in the Middle East, the things that goes on in, in our world today. I look around, I'm like, okay, Lord, it, it can't be long now. And every time some major event happens during the course of that day, I start thinking about Jesus. I'm, I'm looking to the East. You know, I, uh, there's a song that I listened to by uh, Joshua Aaron, and then the, one of the words in the song says, pray for the peace, but look to the East. So we, we can pray for peace, but we better keep looking to the East. Right. Because Jesus is coming. Amen, somebody. Amen. And, then, and then when people do go to the funeral services or memorial service, the only thing they think about is the cessation of life or the end of life. Or they think about missing the person. Or they think about things that really uh, are uh, uh, they're, they're, they're proper for that time. But I also think they should think much deeper than that. Whenever we, we experience these moments where we see people pass, we should start thinking about our longevity and thinking about our mortality and immortality and you know uh i don't know if you guys uh and i don't mean to say this in a, a manner that's disrespectful but if you guys have not learned anything in life is that nobody lives forever right. i don't know anybody that's so far that has lived forever we're all suspect to this thing in life called death right. all of us and then when it happens to people we know we get surprised like well why did it happen to them? Well, it's going to happen to everybody. It, it is. I mean, how it happens might be debatable and how this happened or why this happened. But the truth is, it's going to happen to everybody. And, and life should teach you that there, there's no surprise in that. It's a reality. And, and there's people in our church over this past year, they've lost loved ones. And I'm, I'm sure today that the, the pain is still excruciating and it's indescribable. For those that have just recently lost loved ones, lost fathers, lost daughters, uh, you know, there's there's people that has lost loved ones in the church, and there's always questions. There's always questions, 
And I, I tell people when they come to a memorial service, I said, isn't it amazing how at these moments, and I do it to try to bring everybody's mind and attention to what's going on with life and death. But whenever somebody passes away, you don't call the plumber to come help you. When somebody passes away, you don't call the electrician, unless you know a real spiritual one. <laughs> you know? or, or, one or one that can make good coffee for the memorial service. One of the two. One of the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but, but I, I share that with the folks. Why do you do this? Because you want spiritual answers to a spiritual circumstance. This is different. Life and death is different than anything else. Living and dying is important to all of us. And, and most of the time we're not focusing on the dying. We're always focusing on the living. How much more can we live? How much more can we live? How much more can we get out of this life? What else can we do? And then we get to the end and like, ooh, I don't know if I prepared for this part. Come on, somebody. So this morning, though, I want to encourage all of us, especially those who are, are mourning the loss of loved ones. Uh, I want to encourage us in the blessed hope of Christ this morning. Amen. There is a blessed hope, as the Bible calls it. And I'm not an expert on the subject of the resurrection, but I do have a Bible. Okay, I'm, I'm not an expert in some of these areas. I'm, I'm, I don't know that I'm an expert in any area. I'm kind of like one of those jack-of-all-trades, master of none. i got a whole lot of knowledge. i got, I got enough knowledge in some areas just to get me in trouble. Just to get me in the conversation, and then I'm lost. I'm like, ooh. I mean, that's about it. And then i got to start backing out somehow. I'm like, oh, Lord, I opened my mouth on that one. I have a clue. I don't know how to go any further. i got to get out. So, so I'm, not a, I'm not an expert on this subject, but I do want what my Bible says. And this is what my Bible says. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. And he says, this is uh, Paul writing to the Thessalonian church. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. Come on, say, say I'm not going to be ignorant. I'm not going to be ignorant. That means, you know, sometimes when people you use the word ignorant, it sounds like a bad word, but this means unlearned, uneducated, not knowing about something, right? And here even Paul says, I don't want you guys to be ignorant. I don't want you to be un, un, unknowing, undiscerning what's really going on here. He said, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Woo-hoo! I like that. For the Lord Himself, for the Lord Himself will descend with a shout. There's a song, country song, gospel song like that one time. And uh, he said, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So I'm going to comfort you with these words this morning. Amen, somebody. Amen. Some, sometimes uh, I'm out messing around, playing golf or whatever, doing something, and people ask me my profession. And sometimes I tell them I'm a motivational speaker. And other times I tell them, well, depends on who you ask, I could be a demotivational speaker. <laughs> I might be demotivating a few people. I don't know. But, uh, but I, the Bible says to encourage, comfort one another with these words. Well, what words? You know, there's, a, there's another doctrine called the rapture of the church, and we're not going to get into it, but there's a rapture of some people. Well, the, Bible, the word rapture is not even in the Bible. Well, the, the word catching away is. And catching away just means rapture. We're going to be taken out of here one day. And for those that, who, are, who are alive at the return of Jesus, we'll be part of this catching away part. If we're alive when Jesus returns, we'll be part of the rapture, the, the catching away. We'll be looking to the east, and here he'll come. Woo! Split that eastern sky and bam, shazam, there he is, right? I'm sure it'll be a whole lot of Gomer piles at that moment. Woo, shazam! I mean, they're going to be, they're going to see Jesus and they're going to like, he's going to floor them. They're like, well, golly, that preacher was right. You know, it's going to, they're going to be, they they won't even know what to do, (laughs) right? So I think the Gomer pile anointing will come on some people and they'll just like, Lord, Lord, shazam, there he is, y'all. 
But the ones that are alive and remain, we're going to see him come. And he's going to capture, rapture, take us away to be with him. But what he's doing here is with, with all the talk of returning, uh, the returning of Jesus, I think the writer, of Thessalonians are giving, the writer of Thessalonians is giving us some insight into those that are not alive at the time of the rapture. Remember when Jesus left, he, he goes up in this cloud and he's looking down and he's ascending and the people are around are standing looking up and then the angels appear and says, Why are you stand ye here gazing? Y'all remember this story? Right? So he's looking at the, the disciples, the angels are, why are you standing here gazing at him? The same way he left is the same way he's going to return. He left on a cloud, he's coming back on a cloud. You're standing here looking, he said, why are you standing here looking? And I guess they're saying, look, get on about your business now. You'll know when he comes because it's going to be the same way. You're not going to miss it. The same thing you just saw, you're going to see again one day. So all the talk of that, I believe, this is what I believe. Now, you, I mean, I'm not a biblical scholar. I just know I read my Bible, and I get a little insight when I'm reading it. I think that Paul was trying to let the, the folks know in, in Thessalonica, he's, they're like, yeah, but we're waiting on the return of the Lord. Some of these people died while we were waiting. What about them? Right? And I believe this is why he says, look, I don't want you guys to be ignorant about this point. Because there's probably people still saying, hey, the Lord's coming quickly. The Lord's coming quickly. Some of them that saw him leave might, still, might have still been alive at that time, saying he's coming, he's coming. Now, they might have been elderly, but Paul's writing. He didn't write long after Jesus was gone. Some people were still talking about, hey, the Lord said he was coming quickly. Let's keep looking. Let's keep looking. And then Paul finally says, hey, look, I know you guys are maybe concerned about the people that died before his return, right? Because they might be thinking, well, we're, they're not alive. They might miss this thing that Jesus is going to do when he comes back because they died right but then uh what paul's trying to do is says i don't want you to be ignorant about this for the lord is going to descend with a shout and he's going to capture us but the dead in christ shall rise first and i was going to cover this a little bit in the down further and i probably will say it again but you know there's going to be two resurrections there's going to be two resurrections there's going to be a resurrection of the righteous and there's going to be a resurrection of the unrighteous the resurrection of the righteous those those dead in christ shall rise first and meet the raptured in the air Amen. That's, that's, kind of, that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. So our loved ones that have passed on, and, and if we even pass on be before the return of Jesus, we will be part of the resurrection of the dead. We're going to be part of that. We're, we're told not to sorrow like others who have no hope. So there's a lot of people out there in the world that are sorrowing because they have no hope of a life after this life. And they live like, like there's no hope after this. And then some people come into those services. I've seen it time and time again. You can look on their faces that, that they have no hope of this person after this life. And, and that's Jesus says, look, you don't have to be that way. Paul says, look, you don't have to be that way. Jesus said, trust me, you'll be where I'm at. Paul said, trust him, you'll be where he's at. Right? So I believe, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, then even those who sleep in Jesus... Will God bring with him is what the Word of God says. So what's happening here is the Word of God is reassuring us that our loved ones will not be left out of heaven just because they weren't here and alive for the rapture. And that's what Paul's telling the Thessalonians. Just because your loved ones weren't here and just because they're not alive when Jesus comes back don't mean they're going to miss out on this thing. They believed when they died. Guess what? They're going to get the same reward you are. They're going where you're going. Amen, somebody. And when people lose a loved one in this life, I know it hurts, and I know the pain, I know the frustration of losing a loved one. We just got back from Colorado a couple months ago. Michelle's mother passed away. Well, today, that is still an awkward thing for me because she's so young and just out of the blue. It's like, are you kidding me? And now I can't, and now I can't even joke with her when she says something to me, and I say, yo, mama. I mean, I can't even say that anymore. Now it's, it's just not nice. I mean, we joke. you guys don't know. We joke about things like that. And we have something coming up in the South. You just talked about people's mamas. Your mama. No, your mama. No, your mama. And I can't even use no mama jokes on her anymore. But it's just, it, you know, it happens. And, but as ministers, we've faced it so many times in so many people's lives that we understand it more so than people that don't face it maybe sometimes on a weekly or monthly basis like we do. But we're all, going to face, we're all going to face death. But the reality is that though your loved ones, believers in Jesus Christ, are not going to be left out of this heavenly reward. Right. Amen, somebody. So we're being reassured by the Word of God that we will all have our place in heaven, heaven at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're, we're all going to find our place in heaven at His return, whether, we've, uh, whether our loved ones has went on before us or whether we're still alive 
whether it's by the way of the grave or the way of the rapture, we as believers all are assured our place in heaven. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. But this part of the resurrection of the dead is what, it, it, you know, some people are not so sure about it. But, you know, unless we're here at the return of Jesus, just like all those that have gone before us by the way of the grave, we're going to be part of the resurrection of the dead. Amen. We will be part of it. So I would, I would encourage you to believe in it. Believe in the resurrection of the dead. I'm going to give you some passages on why to believe in it. And I know this isn't what anybody wants to hear. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to comfort you in these words. You're going to die, but you're going to be part of the resurrection of the dead. <laughs> no, see, that's what I, I mean. It's just, you know, you say some comments like this, and some people get offended by it. It's not meant to offend, but, you know, the old, old adage that, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Right. You know, we, we're, we're enjoying this life so much that we forget how enjoyable that one's going to be. That this life is nothing compared to that one. Amen. And I know this, like I said, is not, not what everybody wants to hear, but that we're facing the same thing that everyone else before us born on this planet had to face, and that's death. But 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 26, I'm going to read this passage, and I'm going to actually go back and hit a few verses above it after this. But 1 Corinthians 15, 20, and 20 through 26. But now is Christ risen from the dead... How about that? But now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since man came death, or since by man came death, by man also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put, have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. For the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Sometimes in this life we are so... Uh, enamored with, well, why did this person die? Why did that person die? Why did that person die? I can tell you just as plain as I can tell you anything else, the reason they die is because we have an enemy on this planet called death. Amen. Yeah. And he's an equal opportunity offender. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't care. Death, the, the death does not care about who you are. He don't care about your sex. He doesn't care about your age. He doesn't, doesn't care about your status in life. He don't care how much money you got, how much money you don't have. He cares absolutely nothing about you except he wants your life. Death. The enemy of life is death. Amen. Yeah. Jesus come to give life and life more abundantly, but the enemy come to do what? Steal, kill, steal, and destroy. So we have an enemy, and it's called death. And sometimes we, we're so enamored with why this happened, and we forget that the reason it happened is because we still live in a cursed earth. This is not heaven, in case you hadn't noticed. There'll be no pandemic in heaven. There'll be no COVID-19 in heaven. No Biden 20. One. Be, I'm sorry. sorry. That's the only, that's only thing worse than COVID-19. I um, mean, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. I should probably shouldn't have said that one. That's, that's. I just, hey, you gotta love me. I'm your pastor. Hey. But, so by one man, Adam came death to all the earth. There's a lot of people who don't believe in the original sin, but right there it says it. By one man came death to all. Plain and simple. You're born into death. You're born into death. And God will have grace to a certain age. God will have grace to a certain comprehension. God will have grace until the time comes where your grace for that part is over. And now you have to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But there's a grace until the a or an age or a comprehension. I, like I say, I'm no scholar in this, but I know there's a comprehension level that God will not judge you for until you get there. Right. And when you get to a certain comprehension level, then God will say, okay, you know now you better receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Right. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Because by one man we're all born into death. But by one man, Jesus came a resurrection from that death. Yeah, right? He says one man brought death to the earth, but guess what? Another man brought life back and says, I'll resurrect those that have died. You, Amen, somebody. So Jesus is the first fruits of that resurrection, though. Jesus was the first man raised from the dead as part of God's new covenant. Yeah. 
Jesus was the first man raised from the dead as part of God's new covenant. And it says right there that, that for since man came by death, one man came to resurrection, and Adam all die, but in Christ all will be made alive. Amen. Come on, somebody. That's good news. So, but it says every man in his order. What was the order? Well, Christ had to come first, and he had to be resurrected first. And now those that have died after that, they get to go. The order that has been laid out. After they that are in Christ coming, the rapture will get to go. Uh, those that are, that are dead, they'll be, get, they'll be going. Resurrection from the dead. Amen, somebody. The last enemy, the last enemy will be death. So Jesus is the first fruits. This is how you know that this is how we're born again. You know, a lot of folks still don't believe in miracles. They don't believe in miracles and signs and wonders. Well, I got news for you. You can't even get born again until you believe people can be raised from the dead. Right? You can't even get born again until you believe at least Jesus was raised from the dead. <laughs> right? This is how we are born again, believing that Jesus was the Son of God, that he died for our sins, he was dead and buried, and on the third day he rose again. You can't get born again unless you believe those things. Come on, somebody say, on the third day. <laughs> on the third day, our Savior got up out of the grave. Why did he get up out of the grave? So he could get you up out of the grave. He was the first fruits. He was that first thing that was, was dead and buried and resurrected and brought back to life so he could do the same for us. So on our third day, or whatever day. <laughs> We could be resurrected with him. Amen, somebody. You cannot be saved if you don't have the faith to believe in the resurrection of the dead. I've got to say it again. You cannot be saved if you don't have the faith to believe in the resurrection of the dead. Because you have to believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. Here it says it right here. 1 Corinthians 15, 16 through 19. 1 Corinthians 15, 16 through 19. It says, For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. He said, look, if, if there's no resurrection of the dead, then he's still dead too. But it also says, and if Christ be not raised, then your faith is in vain and you are still in your sins. See, a lot of people believe that Jesus died for their sins. Well, guess what? It's not complete until he gets out of the grave. There, it has to be a complete... Uh, uh, operation of the sacrifice that sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross he, he was born, he came as the son of God okay then he was beaten he was sacrificed on a tree he died for our sins and he went into the tomb well none of that's complete if he doesn't get out of that tomb right. amen, it says right there if Christ be not raised and your faith is in vain then you are still yet in your sins there had to be a completion of it. He said, Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. So that means that all those that have died and, and believed in Jesus a long time ago, if we don't believe in the resurrection, if we don't believe Jesus got out of the grave, guess what? Then they can't get out either if Jesus didn't get out. Right. Amen? But it says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. That's a pretty powerful statement, isn't it? If in this life only we have hope, we are of men most miserable. Guess what? I'm not miserable. You know why? Because I believe on the third day. <laughs> Come on, say third day. third day. I believe on the third day Jesus got out of that grave. Hallelujah. Amen? And since I believe Jesus got out of that grave on the third day, since I believe in the resurrection, that means everybody that's perished since then, they're going to get out of their grave. Amen. That means when I die, I'm going to get out of my grave. Amen. There's going to be a resurrection of the dead. I have hope in Christ. He said, if you're only hoping that Jesus is going to bless you in this life, but you don't partake of anything believing on the afterlife, then how miserable is that? I know people that live miserably. Why? Because they have no hope in Jesus from this life forward. Remember I said, I said that I, be, I believe every now and then we ought to be thinking about the afterlife, not just this one. We go around thinking about how much we can enjoy this life. And, and if all we're thinking about is how much we can have fun in this life and enjoy this life, and, and Jesus is really blessing me now, and Jesus now, and Jesus this, but never think about Jesus there, right. we're missing a big part of the blessed hope of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Some might say, amen. amen. See, if Jesus was not raised, our faith is in vain. We're still in our sins. There's no hope for those who have fallen asleep or passed away. Come on, somebody. But our hope is in Jesus. It's not only in this life, but it's also in the life to come. There is going to be a resurrection of the dead. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. And even us that are alive and remain, our bodies are going to be transformed. It's going to be like a death takes place to us. This old man's going to be put away, and we're going to receive a new man. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
So we, we are, well, none of us escape this. Uh, this, this uh, even the Bible talks about this outer shell decaying and falling off and the spirit coming alive out of here. Unless the outer shell, the outer man, decays and dies away, the fruit of the, 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 the seed will never come up. Oh, well, that's a deeper, different teaching. That's deeper than maybe some of you. A farmer knows this concept, don't they? You plant something with a husk or a shell, it has to destroy that husk or shell for the, for the, the, the crop to come out of it. That's why this outer body has to die is because the spirit that's in it is going to come alive one day and this flesh will never glory in the presence of God. So the body has to be destroyed so that the life in the body can come out of the body. Ooh, come on, somebody. That's why we ought not be afraid of dying. That's why we ought not be afraid of COVID or anything else that goes on in this world. Why? Because Paul said, for me to die is gain. <laughs> for me to die is gain. You kill this body, you just release me to the presence of the Lord, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. You kill this shell, you, you take this husk, this seed, and you tear it apart, and the life that comes out of here gets to spend the eternity with Jesus. Woohoo! Come on, somebody. It don't get any better than that. It don't get any better than that. I'm not of men most miserable. I have hope. You have hope. Why? Because on the third day, he got up. Mm, come on, somebody. Man, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Why? Because I have hope. I have hope. I'm not walking around with my head down wondering what's going to happen. There's a lot of people that don't know where they're going if they die. There's a lot of people that don't know where they're going while they're alive. <laughs> Let alone when they die. There's people still struggling today. They don't even know where they're going. I'm telling you, believing in Jesus Christ, having this blessed hope, having the assurance that the resurrection of the dead is a part of us getting to go to heaven, then this life, it gets so much easier. Losing, losing a loved one doesn't sting near as bad. Oh, death, where is your sting, as the Bible says? It, it doesn't hurt near as bad to know that your loved one is in the presence of the Lord when they leave here. Mm, come on, somebody. But as I said, this is the part where we don't talk about a whole lot, is there's actually two resurrections. And one resurrection is for the righteous and one is for the unrighteous. Now, I don't want to get too deep into it, but, you know, there's actually, in the, even the first resurrection, there's kind of a couple of a stages, right? We know that when the, the first rapture, we're going to go, and there's going to be this uh, thousand-year reign, and then the Lord's going to come back. If there wasn't another rapture-type thing to take place, then there wouldn't be a need for 144,000 male Jews to preach during the tribulation period. I don't want to get, you know, there's, there's a lot to be said. That's why I say I'm no scholar in these things, but I read my Bible and I say, hey, wait a minute, God's got a plan, but what he's going to do is he's going to come back and rapture his church. There's a whole lot of bad things going to happen when that happens. We think things are bad now. You wait till the Holy Spirit and the church leaves this planet. But we're going to leave just to come right back because he's going to rebuild the whole thing, right? He's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, right? So we're going to be raptured and resurrected to come right back. But whenever we leave this place, yeah, it's going to be nice. I'm, I hope some of y'all get to live by me. My mansion's going to be nice. <laughs> he said he's he preparing a place for me. That's why I hadn't come back yet. It's taking so long on my house. <laughs> I don't, well, <laughs> I mean, at least y'all can, can walk by and look at it. Woo, Pastor Gene. Mm, that's a nice mansion you got there, buddy. But, uh, but, but this is what he says. This is John 5, 28 and 29. John 5, 28 and 29. I'm going to start praying. My, my mansion will probably have a golf course. It'll have an airstrip. It'll have a <laughs> hangar. <laughs> I've got to start praying about a, a heavenly airplane. What my heavenly airplane going to look like? Yeah, I don't need it. Yeah, but, it, but I, it's fun. <laughs> John, John 5, 28 and 29. It says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, and the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. See, one day the voice of the Lord will be heard by all, even those in the grave. One day, you know, there's a lot of folks today that are still curious about hearing the voice of the Lord. One day is going to come, there will be a, a, an unmistakable call, an unmistakable horn blow. Everybody's going to hear the voice everybody's going to hear the horn. Hmm. There'll be a calling forth from the grave, those who are believers and those who did not believe. Now, believe it or not, this is the most important part of the message today, right now. This is the most important part. Because Jesus is coming, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. 
Jesus is coming, and there's not a thing on this planet that you can do to stop it, that I can do to stop it. I got, I got to reiterate that. Nothing. Jesus is coming in his time back to this earth to rapture us and to raise the dead, and there's not a thing on this earth you can do about it. But when Jesus does come, he's going to separate. He's going to resurrect those dead in Christ first to everlasting life. And then the next resurrection, he's going to resurrect them to the judgment throne of God to be sentenced to hell forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Hmm. And at his coming, it's too late to decide. When, when he returns, that's when it's too late to decide which one of this group you wanted to be, the goat or the sheep. Right. It's, what he, it's what he says. He's going to separate to the right and the left. It's going to be goat and sheep. At that time, it's too late. It's on, it's, it's on this side of the grave that the decision has to be made. Right. That's why this part of the message is the most important. We can talk about rapture. We can talk about resurrection of the dead. But the most important part is, is making the decision before you face that. Noah didn't wait till the rain started to start building an ark. Right. You don't wait for the storm to try to build something in protection. It's on this side of the grave that we make the decision of whether we're going to be the resurrected into eternal life or we're going to be the ones resurrected into eternal death. Now, some might not agree with that, but I hate their, I hate their disagreement because they're going to suffer even in their unbelief and their disagreement. And that's not good. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we preach this message about the resurrection of the dead. Because one day we're, we're, we believers, those that do believe, we're going to spend eternity with Jesus. Those that do not believe and are not born again are not going to spend eternity with Jesus. The Bible talks about, when Jesus was talking about the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees one day, he looked at one group and said, you're of your father, the devil. Jesus is going to resurrect one group to eternal life to live with their God, and there's going to be another group resurrected to eternal death to live with their God. I wouldn't want to live with their God. And I encourage you to tell everybody you can and you make sure you make that decision that you're not going to live with their God. I'm not going to hell. I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to keep from that happening. Come on, somebody. Many are waiting <laughs> to make their decision for Christ. <laughs> Many are waiting before they make this decision. You need to tell whoever you know that's waiting that the decision has to be made now. The decision has to be made. It has to be made now on this side of life. And as we know, as I said, nobody lives forever. And most of the time, we don't know when the time is going to come. It's not ours to make that decision. It's not ours to call. We believe in Jesus. We believe in healing. We believe we're going to live out the length of our days. And we make our confessions. And we, we do everything we can do to trust God in this life. But still... We live by faith and we live by hope. We still don't know. There's a lot of people believe God, trust God, and they would live out the days of their life, but this enemy called death through another person cut their life short. So sometimes your best efforts cannot, still cannot keep the enemy from death coming. That's just, and that's just part of life and we know it. I just want to leave you with that this morning. This is, this is what I want to do. If everybody would, just close your eyes and bow your head. and Let's pray for a minute. Hmm. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And as I've said this morning, I believe that there's going to be a resurrection of the dead. And I believe there's going to be a rapture. I believe Jesus is coming. Scripture is pretty plain on it that we're going to be raptured or we're going to be resurrected from the dead. But if you're here this morning, I'm not going to... I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to make you do anything. I'm not going to call you out. But what I do want you to do is confess it. I want you to acknowledge it. I want you to understand it. If you're here this morning and uh, you just need to tell the Lord, hey, um, I, need to, I need to make this right while I'm alive now, while I'm on this side of the grave. If you're here this morning and you, you'd have to question that, what if, what if today was your last day? I, I think sometimes we should... Think about it. What, what if today was my last day and I had to face the Lord today? 
would I get to heaven? Would he let me in heaven? Would he raise me to that resurrection of life or would I be raised to the res- resurrection of the damned and the damnation? All of you be praying in here right now. Pray for pray for anyone in here this morning that, that there there's doubts and there's questions or there's there's decisions that have to be made. Father, we pray this morning. If, there, if you're in here this morning and that's you, could I see your hand so I can pray with you this morning? I said, I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to be able to agree with you in prayer. Thank you for that hand. Thank you. Thank you. If there's anybody in here, if you, you, this is, this is, you know, it, this really is a matter of life and death. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that hand. Anybody else? I just want to agree with you in prayer this morning. I want to agree with your, your decision to trust the Lord with all your heart today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else? I was riding to church this morning thinking about the... Usually the only thing that keeps a person from submitting and surrendering to God is just utter pride. Pride is deadly. <laughs> pride is absolutely deadly. And you and it's usually for no reason. You don't have to have it. You don't have to be that way. <laughs> Especially when it comes to the things of the Lord. So let's pray this morning. I saw those hands and I just want to agree with you in prayer. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you that this morning we've talked about the resurrection of the dead. We've talked about the rapture a little bit, which is, Father, we know that's another doctrine in itself, but they do kind of go hand in hand. So I pray this morning for everybody in this room. I pray for those that lifted their hands and said, yeah, I don't know. I need to know. Well, I'm going to pray for you this morning that you do know and you receive Jesus Christ as your Redeemer this morning. He's your Lord. He's your Savior, but He's also your Redeemer from destruction. God, I pray for them this morning that as they've lifted their hands, that they'll make that decision, Father, to trust you, to serve you, to call on your name. Come on, everybody pray this after me. Say, Father, I believe that Jesus was the Son of God. He was born of a virgin. He came to give us your example. He died, and he was buried, and he rose again on the third day for the forgiveness of my sins now I believe in him and I believe in his resurrection I believe his sacrifice paid for my sins today I'm born again today I am assured I will be either in the rapture or part of the resurrection of the dead unto life in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, God is good.